Hey, how's it going? Gareth James here for mttpokerschool.com and this is part three of my mini Sunday Million Chop review. Uh, this is the hand we left on in the last part and we're just going to carry on uh, going through the hands. Jack 10 off then, it's going to be a fold. Move on to pocket jacks. Going to open here under the gun, 2.25x and taking it down. You'll notice that uh, I've changed it back to the stack sizes rather than big blind. Uh, I think this gives you a, a better idea about how far we are into the tournament rather than just uh, having everyone uh, with you know the number of big blinds they have and having the, the blinds as 0.5 big blinds and one big blind. Uh, 10 to offsuit then. Let's see what happens here. Folds around to the small blind and he limps. So we're just going to go ahead and check here and see a flop. Flop king, nine uh, king. And he checks and... We don't really have any uh, real incentive to want to bet here. I mean, if we had the 10 of spades, then, you know, we have a backdoor straight draw and we have a backdoor flush draw. Uh, if we had 10 two of clubs, similarly, we uh, have the backdoor flush draw. But here, I think uh, we just want to go ahead and check and see a turn card. Pick up a gut shot on the turn. He goes ahead and bets just over half pot. And I think we just have to let this hand go. Uh, it's very, very weak. And, uh, yeah, we're just not going to be able to win much if we do actually go ahead and, and hit here and there's every chance that he just has a very strong hand he can definitely be limping with some very strong hands in the small blind looking to limp jam i mean he can definitely have you know the king nines the king jacks the pocket nines the pocket jacks they all make sense uh, so we actually you know when we do hit our hand we actually lose a, a huge uh huge chunk Hey, too suited here, folds around to us in the small blind. Now, generally speaking, I'm just going to go ahead and limp here and then fold if he raises. Um, but I, th I don't know what I chose to do here. Okay, so I did choose to make it 2.75x. Uh, I think this is fine if you have a read on your opponent that he's folding too much from the big blind. I mean, he's getting a you know a great price here to, to flat in position. He gets to play the whole hand in position. And we don't really want to be playing this hand, a hand as weak as 8 too suited, out of position uh, in this spot, um, especially if we're going to make the pot bigger. Obviously, if he raises here, we just fold. Uh, but if he's just going to go ahead and fold a lot of the time here, then raising um, makes the most sense and is probably going to make us the most money in the long run. Seven four off. Just going to go ahead and make the fold. Jack nine suited. Probably play this one. See a raise from D Diggler ninety nine. Now, whenever you're thinking about flatting hands in this spot, it's important to look at the stacks behind you. You can see that the player in the small blind has around 13 big blinds. So what that's going to mean is that we don't get to realize uh, all of our equity. Um, you know, we obviously don't get to realize 100% of our equity because uh, our opponent can bet on the flop. Um, but we do uh, get to realize a decent chunk being in position. And with the cards being so, you know, pretty close together and then being suited, uh, our chance of realizing equity is uh, is much, much higher. But if, you know, the button goes ahead and jams or the small blind goes ahead and jams, we are not going to get the chance to real realize the equity because we're going to end up folding. Uh, I don't know what I chose to do. So I did just choose to fold here. I think it's maybe a little bit too weak. I think uh, if this isn't in my flatting range, let's say Jack 10 suited is in my flatting range here, then I probably want to go ahead and three bet this hand. And obviously we three bet to like 6K and then the small blind shoves, we're going to have to call it off because uh, there's so much money in the middle. Um, so I think I think actually all the options are available to us here. I think folding is just a little bit too weak. Not really sure why I did that. Okay, so under the gun opens for 3x. Looks like we're playing one, two, three, four, five, eight handed now. Um, okay, and uh, he opens off a short stack for 3x. This, these spots can be pretty interesting. I uh, don't know what I chose to do here. Okay, so I did choose to fold. I think, again, this might be a little bit too weak, but he is making it 3x under the gun. Uh, generally, when this happens, it's going to be a stronger range, and we're going to be very, very heavily dominated here. And if you think about it, you know, what are we really looking for with King Four of Spades here? We're looking for maybe trips, uh, maybe two pair, uh, maybe some flush draws as well. So 
Um, I think what's going to happen here a lot of the time is, you know, if we do hit a flush draw, we check and he bets and we raise or we call or we jam and all of those different things. And we're just going to run into a, a range that is very, very strong a lot of the time. So a lot of um, our EV when we defend from the big blind is going to come from being able to uh, make some plays. You know, we get it usually when we were in the big blind calling a raise, it's usually a really good price. You know, we're facing a two... 2x raise or a 2.25x raise and a lot of the time we don't have to even win the hand that often uh, because we were just getting a discount preflop but here we aren't getting that discount and we therefore need to, to you know, claw back some some of that EV a lot more of the time um, I think we can probably just still call here versus the 3x uh, but I think there's definitely you know we definitely can't defend with king four off um, and obviously if the raise size is much smaller then it becomes a very very easy defend seven six off we're just gonna go ahead and fold pocket twos okay great to see some limping we're just gonna go ahead and call here I hope we do and we flop a set let me see a bet and a call so we've got a decision now whether to to raise or to call um, I like the idea of calling here. There are some short stacks behind us who can then jam. If we are really, really deep, then we don't necessarily want to give a hand like 7-8 or Queen Jack an opportunity to out, uh, outdraw us. But here, I think calling here uh, just makes the most sense. We keep both of these players' ranges uh, pretty wide. Sonic DB is limped under the gun with around 20 bigs, so there's every chance that he has an overpair here. Um, but there's the player next to him as well who could have a weak hand that we can get money from as well. So I like the idea of calling. Uh, five of clubs on the turn. Now goes check, check. And we have to decide how much to bet on the turn. So I think exploitatively we should just be looking to get as much money from both of the players as we can. And that doesn't necessarily mean just to go ahead and rip here. Um, I think making a small bet is going to encourage the Sonic DB player to come along, uh, which in turn should encourage a Gaga 90 to come along as well. So I think anywhere around half pot or less is going to work out well here. Uh, we do go 11.505 and they both fold, um, which is kind of surprising. Um, really unsure as to how both players don't have a decent enough range to continue here. Maybe we could have gone smaller. Uh, it's always, you know, in hindsight, you can say, okay, we could have gone smaller and we could have got calls. Um, I mean, if we look at the 11,505, if, I mean, if Sonic continues, well, obviously we can get stacks in because his, you know, he has hardly any chips left. But if Gaga calls, there's going to be 40K in the middle and he's going to have uh, 33, 32-ish behind. Um, so that's probably why I went to this sizing, so that we can set up uh, just less than pot river jam uh, to get the rest of his uh, his chips in the middle. Okay, pocket kings. See a raise here. I'd like to see a raise uh, around 7,000, maybe a little bit more, 7,200. We decide to flat, which is always interesting. And it's, it's great to do these reviews a little time after the, the event, um, because I really can't remember many of the hands. Um, I guess if we look at the stacks, I mean, this really should point us into why I've decided to call here. We've got a 20 big blind stack on the button. We have like a nine, eight, nine big blind stack in the small blind and like a 16 big blind, 17 big blind stack in the big blind. So, you know, all of them have got great spots here to go ahead and shove. Uh, no, none of them do. Uh, and then we see this flop. He goes ahead and bets. And I can't remember what I chose to do here. I did just decide to go ahead and call. I mean, we're going to have a lot of hands here like uh, pairs. We've got like fours through jacks, maybe. Uh, if I didn't decide to three bet them, maybe fours through tens, four through nines. Uh, we're going to have some sets, sets of twos and threes. We're going to have uh, ace queen, king queen, queen jack, queen ten suited. Uh, all of those suited. Maybe king queen off. And then occasionally like an ace four, ace five, maybe five four suited. Uh, something like that. So the three of hearts on the turn. And he continues to bet here. And this makes me think that he's got a pretty strong range at this point. Um, now he could be betting to try and get us off a hand like the fours through nines, fours through tens. 
and getting value from from the weaker draws. We don't really have too many draws like that. I was, like I said, we've got five four, we've got ace four and ace five. Um, he's obviously not going to be able to fold those hands out of their hearts now. Like five four of hearts, ace four, ace five of hearts. I'm just going to continue here. Maybe six five of hearts occasionally as well if I didn't choose to three bet that preflop. Um, so I definitely think we should just go ahead and, and continue calling here. Uh, we can also always um, make a a bigger bet on the river. I mean, if we call here, the pot's going to be about 30k and he's got 32 behind. So if he does have a hand like ace-queen, uh, it's very tough for him to have king-queen, but if you have ace-queen and queen-jack, then uh, we can get the rest of the chips in by the river. Um, I don't think it makes too much sense to, to raise here. I go ahead and call. And the ace of clubs on the river. And he shoves. And this is a really, really tough spot. So if we think about what our range looks like getting to this river, it's going to be some queen x. It's going to be the pairs, like four through nines or tens. Uh, and so our opponent ha definitely has an incentive to go ahead and jam here to get us to fold all of those hands. Um, that's a great card for him, the ace of clubs. Uh, it puts us in a tough spot with our queen x as well. So on the one hand, it looks like this, you know, could be a pretty good bluff catcher. Um, I think if we had uh, the King of Hearts in our hand, it would be a really bad bluff catcher because the kind of hands he's going to triple off here is going to be uh, Hearts. So blocking him from having a, uh, sorry, King 10, King Jack of Hearts, maybe even a, occasionally King 9 of Hearts, I guess, uh, isn't great. Uh, admittedly, that's only a couple of combos. So, uh, but I think it's important to to not have the King of Hearts here. So we could potentially make a call here. Um, I'm not thrilled by the call. I'm trying to think about all of the Ace X hands that we can get to the river with. I mean, we do have like a um, like I said, like Ace Four and Ace Five occasionally. Uh, we have Ace X of Hearts, so we might have floated the flop with uh, Ace Jack of Hearts, Ace Ten of Hearts, uh, Ace Nine, Ace Eight, those kind of hands. Uh, they continue on the turn and we get to the river, um, we then, you know, it's a much easier call with with top pair, um, well, two pair if you include the threes. So I think on the whole this is just going to be a fold. Um, like I said, I'm not thrilled with it because it's just such a great run out for him to, to triple us uh, off, or triple it off and get us to fold some of those weaker hands. Uh, I did just run the spot in Pio as well just to just to check. Let me bring that in. And you can see that uh, kings, uh, so if we do get to the river with, with kings, it wants us to call with, well, fold the ones with hearts in and, and call the ones occasionally with without a heart. Um, but the EV, let's just look at the EV here of, of actually calling with the kings. Uh, it is going to lose us money. And in a tournament, I think it's you know it's pretty important not to uh, to lose money here just to prevent your opponent from from over bluffing. Like it is a great card for them to triple it off, but they still got to you know they still got to do it, and he still has a lot of chips here. So I think it's unlikely that we uh, want to call here, and we do have uh, some other hands that that can go ahead and call. Like I said, like we can have Ace Jack of Hearts, we can have Ace Ten of Hearts, Ace Nine of Hearts. We can have it. I mean, we get to the river with Ace Queen. We get to the river with some twos and some threes, like pocket twos, pocket threes. Uh, occasionally, we might have flatted here. I mean, if we're flatting here with Kings, we could have pocket Queens. We could have pocket Aces. You know, those hands all become very, very easy to call here. Uh, so I think I make the fold. Okay, 5-2 off is going to fold. A lot of these hands are going to be folding. I uh, probably won't fold this one though. Okay, so we see a limp and a raise. So a lot of your money is going to come from weaker players limping. Um, well, just from weaker players in general, actually. And we want to go out of our way to play pots against the weaker players. Now... If everyone was much deeper, if everyone had the same size stack as me here, this becomes a very, very easy call. Uh, I think I am still going to go ahead and call. Um, I'm not sure what I did. I said it's a little while ago now. Um, but I think I really want to play pots against the, the limper. And, you know, occasionally the, 
the limpo is going to jam but we've only put in, uh, three big block blinds in uh, let's see what we did okay so we did call and he folds so now we have a pretty interesting spot against the button whose range should be stronger than their normal button range because they've raised over a sort of 20 to 25 big blind limp so uh yeah, we can't treat this as, oh, it's button versus big blind. Uh, the ranges are going to be slightly different. Um, my defending range in the big blind versus this ISO is going to be different as well. So it might be something more like um, sort of middle position one versus big blind, those kind of things. And then versus a you know a slightly bigger sizing as well. So we check and we flop a backdoor flush draw and a gut shot and it goes check, check. Uh, this looks to me to be a very, very good card for us to go ahead and bet. The only thing is that with two flush draws plus, you know, a whole host of straight draws that we could have, we're going to end up over bluffing, uh, I would imagine. So we have to decide, okay, is this the kind of hand that we want to lead here and then jam river? Is it the kind of hand we lead and then check river? Uh, or is it the hand, you know, kind of hand that we can check and then when he bets, we can jam? And I think with this much equity, I think check jamming is quite nice. And we... Uh, I can always, you know, just see the river if he if he checks back the turn. Um, I don't know what again. I don't know what I chose to do, so I did choose to to lead here. Uh, I think again. I think all the options are available to us. Uh, folding is out of the question, uh, but check call, check raise, or lead is fine. The downside to this line is that if he now rips, we have to call it off with queen high, um, and that really sucks. So I'm not sure I completely like this. Um, nine of hearts on the river. I'd, again, I don't know what I chose to do here. I don't think it's a very good card to bluff. I think when the board pairs on the river, you're just going to get called much more uh, frequently. You know, it's much more difficult for you to have a hand. And I mean, he can definitely have a nine x here. I mean, if you think about the kind of hands he he checks on the flop and then calls the turn, it's going to be ace nine, king nine, queen nine, nine eight, nine seven. And he's going to have some pocket twos. He's going to have some slow played uh, strong hands from the flop occasionally. Uh, it's fairly fairly draw uh, draw heavy, so yeah, I just don't think this is a good card to to bluff. Um, I don't know what I chose to do. I did check, and then he bets tiny, and I think we should just fold. Okay, ace queen. The full three x raise here, so I think we can three bet here. If this player is very aggressive. We can just three bet call. Um, we did just decide to call here. This is this is interesting. I guess, in a way, I don't really want to three bet call because his his range should be super strong. And in that case, we turn our hand into a bluff. We can three bet uh, three bet fold, and I'd like to three bet fold here versus an early position open more than a hijack open. Uh, so this is this is kind of kind of interesting. I guess it's because he's made it three x. It becomes much more awkward to three bet, and then he shoves, and then we call, and you know. Against a lot of the players at this level, it's often a hand that has us completely crushed. You know, yes, it might be some pairs like eights, nines, and better, but it's going to be ace king as well, and uh, it's very unlikely to be ace jack, uh, especially making it three x pre and then and then jamming over a three bet. So I guess this is why I chose to call. Again, I'm not completely sold on the idea of of calling here. I guess we can call if the big blind shoves. So we've got a very easy call. Uh, as long as the, the original razor folds. Uh, and I guess as well, we we keep in a lot of the, the weaker ace -X hands that would just fold. Um, yeah, it's certainly interesting. Okay, we check, and he bets. Uh, I think if he'd min-raise pre-flop, I think check-raising here would be great because he has a lot of weaker ace -X hands that we can get value from. Uh, given he 3x dip pre, I'm not sold on that. And we did choose to check raise, uh, so clearly I was thinking along those lines, uh, just check raising and getting it in, uh, and he just folds immediately. Um, yeah, so versus late position, I think check raising a hand as strong as this on this flop is really, really important. I see a lot of players just see, okay, well, we'll just treat it as a bluff catcher, but actually the hand's too strong to be uh, to be a bluff catcher, so we should be looking to check raise. Uh, if he jams, we get it in, and you know we're going to be up against that same range we were talking about earlier, the ace king and the the jacks, and you know not being great shape. Uh, but he can, you know, he can definitely have some weaker ace x hands here as well. This is the three x pre flop does kind of throw you uh, sometimes. 
Okay, now he's making it 4x, so interesting. In fact, let's go back and look at this hand because this guy shoves, so I want to see what he calls off with. So he's 4xing with threes. Okay, that's good, good information to know. Okay, so we see a shove. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold. 9 8 of hearts here. I uh, definitely want to go ahead and open generally. Uh, but we've got one, two, three players who can shove and then a very, very short big blind. So I wouldn't hate to see a fold here. Uh, I mean, we can definitely comfortably raise and then call the big blind for an extra, uh, what would be an extra big blind. Uh, and then, you know, the players to our left do need to, to wake up here. So I think either option is fine. Um, but I think folds, yeah, perfectly fine for those reasons. 7-3 offsuit here. We see a limp and another limp. And another limp or a complete. And we're going to check and just give up here and move on to the next hand. I've got king-queen off. We see a shove and a call. And I think if he'd folded, it would have been close to just uh, for us to get it in. Uh, but I think versus the call, we should just let this go. And we're up against ace, queen, and eights. Uh, nine five off here. Two very short stack players. I think the shoving is is not going to make us enough money. In fact, he's probably just losing. Uh, so I think our options are fold or we could min raise. Um, if these two players are aggressive, then we should just fold because we're just going to get jammed on and and lose like four and a half k. Uh, but if they're fairly tight or this is the bubble, then we can definitely take an aggressive line here. Um, I mean, if it is the bubble and we feel like these two players really care about the bubble, then shoving is going to make money. But I think uh, raising would be fine as well. Um, but I, I'm guessing I just fold here. Yeah. Okay, Jack seven suited to go ahead and fold. Uh, Ace five suited, looking around the table, looking at the stacks. I think we can open here or we can fold. Uh, we do open and uh, we see a three bet. Pretty sizable three bet. Uh, he's out of position, so he wants to go bigger. Uh, I've got no incentive, really, or no interest in continuing here. Just going to go ahead and fold. Uh, A7, probably going to defend here. Okay, not versus the squeeze. Okay, 8, 7 suited. Uh, so again, I choose to 3, 2.5x, uh, decide to open here. And again, I think we can limp and just call. Um, don't know too much about this player just yet. Uh, not a particularly great board. I think we should do a lot of checking here. We do have a pair and a gut shot. Uh, if we bet and get raised, we, you know, we're, we're going to want to continue, but it's not a great spot. Uh, so I do choose to check. Uh, I think we should be check calling. Uh, we certainly have a lot of 10x in our range at this point, and I'm not sure that he does. Uh, let's see. He bets just under half pot. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting spot. And we do hit the nine on the river. Um, we did raise, so he can definitely have some queen x. He can have, uh, I don't think he has queen 10. I think he bets queen 10 on uh, on the turn. He might not even bet queen 10 on the flop. Uh, king queen, I think, can take this line. And, and then he's got queen jack and then maybe queen eight. Uh, so as the most obvious queen x hands uh, so it's kind of close i think we can i think we can bet fold here or we can check call both options are, are fine and he chooses to fold um i think not sure we can bet this sizing though i mean if he has a jack then he's going to be close to calling uh we block an eight which is you know if he has an eight then we kind of want him to call. So if we block that, then it's hard for him to have an eight. So I think this is probably the wrong sizing for this this exact hand. Uh, we should probably go smaller or just go ahead and check uh, check call. And yeah. So yeah, a few spots in this hand. I think we should limp pre. I think the check call on the flop is fine. And then the river, I think we should uh, just look at our sizing a little bit. Okay, here we're gonna 
fold the queen four, move on to the next hand, folding queen six and eight two. Uh, King Jack of Diamonds are probably going to play though. We see a raise, and he's opening off like 22 bigs. Uh, I think we can flat here. I think we can occasionally three bet. Um, I'm not thrilled though because there's going to be a lot of chips in there and then he can shove and we're getting a pretty good price but calling it off with the King Jack of Diamonds is not going to feel particularly great. Um, so I think calling is probably okay. Uh, but we just chose to fold and I think that's just based on his stack size and the other stacks at the table. Um, so like I said, like three betting is not doesn't really uh, feel too great. Uh, we can call here and then I guess we call the cutoff if he shoves, um, but we have to fold to the big blind and the small blind. This is just uh, quite a few stacks now who can shove, and I think folding here is going to be fine. I think if I was in the cutoff or the button, King Jack of Diamonds would be 100% a, a call. And uh, But from here, we're three players in position on us and the two players in, who are short in the blinds, I think it's uh, a fine fold. But it is close. Uh, here we're going to open the ace queen and the big blind defense. And we flop two overs and a flush draw. I mean, we just have a ton of equity here. And he's defending from the big blind. So I think we should just try and get as much money as possible into the pot now. Uh, this is a little bit scary. He goes for the check raise. I mean, he can definitely be check raising here with some hands that we are ahead of. I mean, he could be check raising some flush draws here that we're very happy to get it in against. He could be check raising like a 7-8 or a 7-5 or a 5-3. There's just a ton of hands that he should be check raising here. Now, if this is the kind of player that only check raises two pair or better, then we might have to look at the way we play this hand. But I think, you know, there's 33 and a half K in the middle now. I think there's every chance that he could be raising to get it in with a worse draw. So I think I just pile here. Uh, I think calling would be absolutely fine as well. And obviously not folding the turn. I mean, if we call here, there's going to be 43 in the middle and we have 54 back. So it's not too much of an overbet uh, to rip here. And you know we can just shut out a lot of hands as well uh, at this point. So I did pile and he folds. Um, so yeah, again, I, I think there's probably a... A different way to play the hand you could definitely call the the flop and then decide on the turn um, but I think when there's plenty of bluffs that he can have that we want to deny equity to then uh, like I'm talking about the straight draws here obviously not the flush draws because we're very happy to get it in against the flush draws but against the straight draws that have you know eight outs well six outs that don't include diamonds plus the uh, the outs to to improve to uh, a pair then I think just just getting it in is absolutely fine. Um, but like I said, like you can definitely just call the call the raise on the flop and then decide on the turn as well. Okay, uh, so I'm going to wrap this up for this part. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to leave a comment down below, uh, let me know what you thought of the video. That would be great. And if you really loved it, then uh, obviously hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, share it with your friends. All right, this has been Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com signing off. Take care, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for checking out this video. If you would like free strategy articles and YouTube videos and uh, free podcast episodes delivered straight to your inbox, then head over to mttpokerschool.com right now and sign up for our mailing list. I'll even throw in a free push fold guide and opening hand cheat sheet. What are you waiting for? Head to mttpokerschool.com right now.